On this episode of Superior Angling, we head deep into the wilderness in search of lake trout and whitefish, which is something we do frequently, but this time we do it with a twist. Camping on the ice for four days certainly has its challenges, but it enables us to reach remote areas and experience things oh, like never right, before. Buddy. Let's oh. face it, having our Eskimo <laughs> Outbreak 850 as a home in pretty much the middle of nowhere is special. The sunrises and sunsets, the sounds of nature, and the sights of the fish that swim below are truly something to remember. This will be a two-part series, and we are excited for you to join us on this adventure. Season 7 of Superior Angling TV is brought to you by Eskimo Ice Fishing Gear. All right, we have a, uh, a trip in store for us here today. We are going to be setting out on a four day excursion, ice camping, fishing, emphasis on fishing, but there's some locations like where we are here today and where we're gonna go, it's just too far for a day trip. Like to get all the way out there, all the way back, find a hotel, like it's just not feasible to do in one day, right? So that's why we're gonna ice camp. That's why we're going to be out there for four days. And uh, yeah, it's gonna give us a lot more time to fish, a lot more time to be comfortable, and. Uh, have a lot of fun as well so again we're fishermen not campers um this is a, kind of the first time we've ever done this so it's going to kind of be a learning experience as well we did not pack light <laughs> emphasis on not um so we have three eskimo tubs we're going to have to fill with all our gear we're going to have to make everything fit in these three tubs if they don't fit we can't bring it right we're not making two trips it's just not not uh, not realistic to do so we're going to lay out these three tubs lay out all our gear and uh try to fit it all in and then we're going to gonna head out on you know what's a 30 to 40 mile skidoo ride to get to the lake that we want to fish so um yeah again it's just to do that trip in one day get out there fish get back and then you'd have a two three hour drive to a hotel like it's just you know it's a, it's very unrealistic to do so that's why we're ice camping we're bringing you guys along with us today it's going to be a fun one All right, now a couple more things about the, about the trip here. We're doing this without a generator. Um, and we're gonna have, you know, three and a half days of, of fishing. So, um, you know, we got a, quite a few Markhams with us. Luckily, like a mechanical Markham, such as like the M1, M3, M5 with a Markham lithium battery. Like this could go probably two days, right? So I don't know, we have five or, well, more than that, probably six or seven Markhams we're gonna bring here. But again, once these run out of battery, they're done because no generator, um, no real way to uh, to charge them. So we're gonna pack up a bunch of graphs. We have two cots, or three cots actually, kind of a floor. We're gonna get into more of what we decided to uh, go with on how to set up the tent uh, in, a, in a little while. But this is just gonna kind of be our our graph and, and cot tub here. It's gonna weigh a lot, but you know, and then we, we, we did bring some firewood. We're gonna pack up the, all our gear into the tubs. If we have space, we're gonna bring some wood just because it would save a lot, a lot of time. Um, you know, obviously I have, have an ax and have a cool little saw, but even just for one night, like even tonight, like to not have to go get wood would save probably, you know, one to two hours. So if we have any extra room, we're gonna bring some wood with us. If we don't have extra room, we're gonna keep it all here, so at the truck. So yeah, let's continue to get these packed up. But but again, Markham's lithium batteries, we're pretty good, um, you know, but uh, you know, three of us fishing over three and a half days, we wanna have uh, extra graphs. So yeah, let's continue to pack up these tubs and uh, see uh, how much room we're gonna have. All right, buddy, I think, uh, let's do it. I think we're good, hey? I think yeah. we're good. <laughs> so we'll tow this with the expedition. Your back country can take this one. Correct. And pray to God we don't run into slush, eh? Two out of three isn't bad in some circumstances, but when those numbers correlate to how many tow hitches you remembered to bring, trust us, it's not good. And if that wasn't enough, the slush. Ah, uh, yes, the slush. All right, we're about a third of the way there and it's probably one o'clock. <laughs> 
not ideal, but uh, that's why we're uh, coming out here for for four days, and that's why it's just so hard to fish some spots up here in, in one day. Like you just can't do it, right? Because you you run into slush like we saw back there, and boom, there's two hours of your trip just getting uh, your tubs and you know your tubs out of that slush. Like I've never seen this machine get stuck before, and she got stuck, but the nice part is you unpin the, the, the tub and you crack the throttle and the machine climbs out, but then you get your machine up onto solid ice or solid snow where it's not slush anymore, but then you gotta get your tub up there, right? And that's the part that takes a lot is dragging these tubs. Sure, we can kind of circle around back and hope not to break through again, but uh, I mean, it's just kind of a, a vicious cycle a lot of times, so. Slush is uh, is your enemy, but you know there's there's some lakes that have it, some bays that have it, and some lakes that don't, right? And usually when you get out into like the main lake areas on bigger bodies of water, there's no slush. But you know some lakes are just notorious for slush up here, and they and they're, you know you always have it. So hopefully the uh, the worst is behind us, and now we can kind of put on some miles. Uh, but it is a lot of a lot of deep snow, and you know, but. This is all part of it, right? It's the experience. It's uh, it's a lot. It's 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 taxing, and that's why you don't see many people up here doing it because it's a ton of work. You got to have uh, you know a lot in your favor and the right gear to do it. And you know we're t we're not that well equipped. You know we're we're traveling way too heavy, but uh, you know that's just because we're we're camping for four days. And you know I don't know. We've never camped before, so we don't know what we need and what we don't need. So. We uh, went as light as we can, but we still have a, a lot of weight that's definitely dragging us down. But I think now we'll be able to put on a few miles. All right, believe it or not, we have uh, arrived at our destination about three o'clock, and that's uh, just another reason why. Like it's. You just, it's hard to fish these spots in one day. Like you really, uh, you know, you gotta go on pretty much no sleep and have everything in your favor because like, you, you know, we'd fish for two hours and it's gonna be dark and you gotta go home. So at least we have time on our side so we can uh, get set up and, you know, have the next uh, three days to fish. And if we can fish for an hour this evening, great, right? But if not, no big deal. So we really gotta take time to get this camp set up right. You know, get the 850 set up, get our flooring in, the Esker wood stove, our chimney. Luckily, you know, that, that wood is a pain in the butt to bring, but uh, you know, it, it'll pay dividends tonight because we don't have to worry about firewood. So we can, uh, you know, get some food cooking and, and get, get, get settled in, get cozy, get comfortable. But, but yeah, I mean, we, we made it. So now we're gonna unpack the tubs, get the 850 Eskimo outbreak set up and, uh, you know, get our, get our flooring down and, Hopefully, uh, you know, get camp set up and get situated before that sun starts to, to, to get low. So uh, we got a lot of work to do here. House is set up, floor is down. Next, we need to put some ice anchors in there. As you can see, we're in a pretty exposed location. The last thing you want is for like a, you know, 20, 30 mile an hour wind to pop up and move your house in the middle of the night with your wood stove going. So. We got to uh, put ice anchors down and get this house secure and then maybe insulate it with some snow around the edges or something. But yeah, we'll, uh, let's get a drill bit out. Okay, if you guys don't have one of these Eskimo attachments to put in these stakes, like it saves you so much time. I call it 110% imperative, especially if you're in a lake with like clear hard ice. To screw this in by hand is an absolute nightmare. This just kind of goes in like that. And you can drive these in, you know, it takes no time at all, so. Right there, boom. And that is locked and secured. I just kind of drilled it through that floor to hold that in place too. So we're gonna put these like eight of these to hold that whole house down. And that's really gonna prevent any wind from shifting this house. And then we're gonna take our uh, side straps and anchor these hubs down too. Cause so let's, uh, you know, and when you buy one of these Eskimo pop-up houses, like everything's included for you, right? It's just so nice. So here's our, our tie down straps 
for the hubs on the sides, right? So this is, it all comes with it. So again, this is the Eskimo Outbreak 850 XD. You know, and this this definitely it, it comes in the package and you buy it. So you get all your kind of your straps and your screws to really secure this house and make it bomb proof essentially, right? I mean, we're in a very exposed location right now. And you know, if you're staying for a week, I probably wouldn't set up here, but you know, since we're only here for 4 days, we could kind of see the wind forecast and the weather forecast for the next 4 days. And uh, you know, there's nothing that was extremely significant. So we kind of feel comfortable doing this for now. But again, I, you know, if you're gonna be out here for a long time or you don't have, you know, access to an accurate weather forecast, I'd kind of be a little bit leery. But uh, you know, luckily for us, we, we'll be okay with all this gear here. All right, so strategically, we're gonna put the wood stove on that end of the house. A really nice part about these Eskimo houses is this no trip door. Like it goes right down to the ice, right? Like you don't need to pick up your feet, you trip, like so many other houses, it's just hard to get into. This is nice, you just have a nice clean door right here to go in and out. So this is gonna be our entrance. Our wood stove is gonna be on the far opposite side just so we're not walking past it right you want that thing to kind of be all alone and uh kind of the less amount of action going on around the wood stove the better right so this is uh this is nice it's uh, it's setting up good okay so this is the wood stove that we chose for our tent and since it is larger we chose one that's a little bit larger um, it's called the Superior Stove by Esker. And it's super nice. All the pipes and everything fit right inside the stove. So you don't have to worry about putting it in anything else or having to carry something extra out there. Super easy. It has an elbow. We're just going to put it out the window right here. And then we're going to brace it. And it should be set up in no time. So, um, so we got a stove jack here um this actually just velcros right to the wall um, and the pipe goes through here this is welding blanket so it's not going to burn it's not going to melt and then this is heat resistant plastic or rubber um, so that'll just go right here pipe will go through there and it'll support the pipe a little bit too and then we've got our stove pipes here so like i was saying before they all fit inside themselves so it's super easy to bring wherever you need it to go our elbow, which is going to go out through the window, give us that, that elbow right here. And then we've got more pipes here. And then we got our, our damper, which controls the airflow and the oxygen to the fire. So. Just because we've never done this before, we're gonna try out this fire blanket. We're gonna put it under the stove and on the wall. So it's gonna completely protect the floor and the wall so we don't wake up in the middle of the night and burn down or something. So we're gonna set that up and should work out good. All right, that sun's getting a little bit low, but we have, I think, the majority of the work done. Now it's just kind of all our accessories in our cot set up in there. We'll uh, go in there in a second, but just some things that we packed in our action packer that I think is, you know, necessary. Multiple pairs of Eskimo gloves, net gator, um, obviously our, our, our fishing equipment that we need lights for inside the tent we'll put those there um, some more pliers and tackle 
this 100% imperative, our Camp Chef cooking stove. Yes, you can cook on top of the wood stove inside the, the, the Eskimo house there, but having a, a Camp Chef propane griddle is top notch. So looking forward to using that. And then we have, you know, all our auger batteries in here, but here's kind of a, a big thing is like something that you know, maybe watching this, you don't really think about, but from a behind the scenes standpoint, like camera batteries, it's a huge issue, right? Like we don't have endless amount of batteries, you know, a single battery for one of these cameras is three, 400 bucks, right? So um, power is always a, a concern. So we have our, our Ion, our Gen 2 batteries with the power adapter. These are gonna give us USBs to charge whatever we can, like our wireless mics, all that type of stuff via USB. And then we have, Milwaukee um, bigger batteries for not really bigger but um, Milwaukee batteries with a different adapter that's going to give us a plug-in so we can charge our main camera batteries to some extent again we're very limited on charging if a graph dies if an auger battery dies it's done right there's no way to recharge that so um, we are able to recharge like our wireless mics, that, that small stuff via USB, and then a couple of our Sony batteries with the uh, Milwaukee tool adapter. So um, again, pretty pretty basic, pretty limited. Um, you know, obviously a coffee cup, you can't go wrong, spare belt, you know, just that type of stuff inside our, uh, inside our action packer here so we're gonna continue to kind of accessorize the tent to get some of this stuff set up before that sun gets down all right so these are this is our cot set up these cots are way too big these are not going to be coming with next trip but it's all we have for now so we have a normal size cot here a king size cot here we're gonna have to put a third we have two of these unfortunately so we're just going to keep that third one out of here until we go to bed so we actually have room to walk and do stuff in here so um we have a table it's going to kind of be a dinner table charging table um again we have our garmin inreach here so we can communicate with with the wife and then kids and you know anyone else we need back at home we have our cables and again this is kind of what i was talking about so our ion gen 2 batteries give us this usb option here but this milwaukee this is an m18 red lithium high output um, battery and with this top off contraption we can i can take one of our our sony battery chargers and actually plug it in like a normal wall outlet here so pretty cool we can charge a laptop you know a tablet whatever so we got a couple of these batteries and that top off there so again we're able to charge the bare necessities are pretty limited but we are able to charge so we have the wood stove going behind us um, but yeah this is going to be home for the next uh three four days so i'm it's pretty pretty cool to get this finally set up that sun's getting low i don't know if we're gonna have much time to fish at all but um you know maybe get some food cooking and just kind of continue to get uh organized and situated and uh yeah we'll get the the sleeping stuff set up we'll kind of go over some sleeping bags here in, in a little bit but uh yeah this is this is home right this is uh going to be our base camp and i'm looking forward to uh the next couple of days uh, a lot of the hard work now is behind us now we can start to start to have some fun Actually, uh, slept, slept pretty good. It's daylight outside. <laughs> Fell asleep at like nine o'clock and wake up and it's 7 a.m. I'd say, uh, I thought we'd be up all night kind of stoking the fire and trying to stay warm because it's probably negative 25, pushing negative 30 out, you know? 
And uh, no, we just literally, everyone fell asleep and never woke up. <laughs> and now it was freezing cold this morning. But now we got a hot fire going, some hot coffee. But those sleeping bags, those Tiger sleeping bags are, are nice. Like it was freezing cold in here and bury in a sleeping bag and you wake up and you're nice and cozy and warm still. Like I didn't get cold at all. But get a fire going, get some breakfast going here and then it's time to put some big fish on the ice. Fish, 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 Eric's fish. got a fish. Eric's got a fish. <laughs> Eric's got a fish. No way. <laughs> That's a good start to the morning. No way. This is what I mean by we don't have to go far. Like our camp is right here. I'm in my slippers. Eric drilled a hole and <laughs> every time he came out here to grab a little bit of water or something, he just checked the mark them and see and yeah, this fish is our, on. This is our hole for uh, getting water for coffee and oatmeal and just finished breakfast and you got a fish, dude. Unbelievable. <laughs> I figured I'd throw a rod at it. I'm still in there sipping my coffee. I can't believe it. I can't say I've ever seen someone catch a lake trout while I'm wearing slippers. It's going to be a decent one, eh? These drags are cold today. That's bringing me our biggest battle today. Well, hopefully the, the sun should warm it up over yeah. here. I mean, it's cold. It's nasty cold right now, but... The sun should help us. You got a good fish here, buddy. You got a good fish. That fish is going back to bottom. We had him at 30 and right back down to 55. Crazy. I thought I was getting a strange return because I walked out and looked and there's two marks. And I pulled my bait and there's two fish staring at it. That's insane. <laughs> That's started insane. Started pulling away and both were chasing. It was a race. It was a race for these lake trout for who's going to get the tube jig. That's crazy. Yeah. They're, they're, you know, I thought we were too late because we slept in and woke up and like the sun's up. Five minutes later, Eric comes out, drills a hole and hooks up. <laughs> this is insane. <laughs> he's right uh, there. Look, he's right there on him. Yeah, he is. He's so, it's probably bigger. We're going to eat it. It's a big fish, Eric. Coming up. Holy cow. Eric, oh my gosh. Are you kidding me? Look at this. Look at that <laughs> fish. Eric, that's a breakfast fish. Let's go. That's unbelievable. Morning coffee, morning lake trail. Let's go. I'm in my <laughs> flipping pajamas and slippers. You're out here catching a big lake trout. Look at that fish. Unreal. Unreal, buddy. <laughs> Good timing on coming to check that rod. No kidding. It's super cold. Let's get this fish unhooked and back down. Awesome. Fish? Yep. Eric's hooked up again. This is insane. Like, insane. I gotta get these pips on. <laughs> you can't make this up. This is madness. Buddy, my right hand's still numb from your last fish. <laughs> and you hook up again. I think we put the pimps on a good spot. <laughs> Eric's fishing. Five feet out the front door. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. There's another fish on the screen too. Oh. We're, they're loaded in here right now and they're oh, yeah. hungry. That's not even your fish. No, I'm I'm like ten feet away. There's another fish swimming down. That's insane, dude. They're dude, fighting for I it. cannot believe you just hooked two fish. If I fish all day and catch two fish, it's a good day. You've done it in four, four minutes. I'm at a loss for words, right? Just how magical it is being out here, sleeping on the ice. You wake up, take two steps out the front there door is. of your cabin. There you go. Jeez, that thing is mad, dude. Look at that fish. Look at that. <laughs> Eric, buddy. Good morning. That's a nice one. That's a nice fish. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Look at that fish. Number two for you. Number two. Number two, and you still have to finish your morning coffee, hey? No, it's probably going cold on me right now. <laughs> but I consider myself wide awake now. Look so. at that, that is wild. <laughs> Absolutely wild. We're gonna get this fish back, and who knows where this day is gonna take us, but it's yeah. gone pretty good so far. Unreal. <laughs> <Dude. laughs> 